At Goodyear, uh, we provide tires and services for the most difficult and challenging applications in the world. And of course, innovation is at the core of what we do. With innovation, we provide the solutions of the mobility for today and in the future. This is why we start with a concept. The concept tires were sparked, first of all, the debate about how mobility will be in the future, but also triggers the discussion about what technologies will need to be developed. To create the Goodyear era concept tires, we needed to bring different teams together and combine expertise of design and science. We brought together industrial designers from our design studio at the Goodyear Innovation Center in Luxembourg, together with our material scientists and modelers who create the simulations to provide the concept and the functionality of the Goodyear Aero concept tire. When developing the Goodyear Aero concept tire, we took into account the latest developments in the mobility space. And one of the latest and biggest developments we saw is the rise of urban aero mobility. As congestion is growing in the world, mobility companies are looking at new solutions, and for that, they're now looking into the sky for the answer. In the end, we hope that our concept tires will spark the debate about future mobility challenges and solutions. Our concepts are very thought-provoking. We want to stretch the imagination, come up with things which are outside of the box. And uh, we thought really how can we find a solution which would enable the vehicle to take off vertically, but also which could take off while driving in the, in the movement. The non-pneumatic structure, which is supporting the load of the vehicle, could also work as a rotor when it's tilting to horizontal shape. So uh, when they are tilting, the non-pneumatic structure becomes the fins of a rotor and will give the needed thrust to take off. What we really wanted to do is this seamless mobility, whether it's flying or driving, or from flying to driving. As you easily understand, this is a challenge in a way that uh, this tire is special because it needs to achieve two different functions. First one is a very classical one, which is about supporting the weight of a car when driving it on the road, that's, that's very conventional for us. The second challenge obviously is to make it uh, acting as a propeller and able to make a lightweight car flying in the air. For a normal tire, conventional tire, we have the ability to test it in the field for its performances. In this case it's a bit special because we were not able to actually uh, challenge the flying ability of this tire on a flying car or plane, so uh, it means that everything has to go through simulations. In this case, with this new concept, which is definitely far away from a conventional tire, we use simulations to see how, how much we are capable of designing something which is out of our uh, normal, usual design space. For classical performances like uh, uh, running resistance, wet grip, whatever, we use finite element analysis, which determines the structural uh, behavior of the tire. But here, when uh, determining the uh, flying ability of this new concept, we uh, rely on computational fluid dynamics to compute the surrounding air uh, around this tire and, and compute the thrust and the lift from, from this new concept. The reason we choose a non-pneumatic structure is because it offers a solution which can be easily 3D printed and is both strong and lightweight. By using a non-pneumatic structure, we were also able to integrate the flying ability of the tire. The individual blades absorb shocks while driving on the road, but also act as robust rotors that are able to create vertical lift when the tire is tilted. The most difficult part for me during the development process is that this tire is not a regular tire. It requires some out-of-the-box thinking as we normally test regular road tires. You have to think about features that you normally don't have to take into account. For example, finding the right balance between strength and flexibility took some time and testing. We had to find the right flexibility and position of the individual blades. After we found the right flexibility, the last thing we needed to check was the shape and position of the blades. Because they are flexible, the blade needs some room to bend. In our early test, it became clear that we cannot choose the form and position freely. If the blades touch each other, this might impact the structural integrity of the tire and its capability to lift the vehicle in the air. 
So we had to position the blades in such a way they have room to bend and not touch each other. Magnetic propulsion is basically taking advantage of the properties of magnets. Magnetism gives us the possibility to make a frictionless bearing so that our tire can turn around without any friction. In the rotating part of the tire, we have a special kind of magnetic material which creates an opposing force if we bring a magnet into its vicinity. Since we have a full ring of this material, if we bring it into an, another ring of permanent magnets, we get really an, a magnetic bed with a magnetic gap in between. So that gives us our bearing. Now, we also want to have not only this frictionless turning, but we need to initiate the turning itself. You need to get force uh, onto the tire. This we realize with electromagnetic fields. So we have like a big spool, uh, we put an electric current inside. This generates again a magnetic field. This magnetic field can interact with a special magnetic material on our turning part of the tire, and this will give us an, a force which makes the tire turn. 